through cooperation and exploration and peaceful uses of outer space for sustainable economic and social development. In this regard, assistance to member states with capacity building in the use of space science and technology and their applications is really central to the work of the office. The office has thus developed a robust, robust uh, capacity building program throughout the past decades. But with now a much more complex and innovative space sector, the need for a holistic and cross-cutting approach to face the new challenges is an additional motivation to the team of the space applications section. With access to space, as you will see, uh, we provide broad possibilities for access to space for all member states of the United Nations. We increase the participation and engagement of women and girls in space science, technology, innovation and exploration. And for that, we have marvelous success stories in the last few years in different countries. We also contribute to the engagement and participation of young voices for the use of space for a sustainable world. We strengthen connections with and participation of the private sector, governmental, non-governmental and anti-governmental organizations. And finally, among other things, we also contribute to build relevant and adapted skills and knowledge to promote the use of space-based solution towards reaching the sustainable development goals. Today, in the next 45 minutes, one hour, we offer a very condensed overview of the initiatives. But please uh, visit, and it will be reminded to you a few times, please uh, visit the websites on UNOSA.org where all the information is clearly accessible. This includes not only information about the opportunities, but a substantial quantity of YouTube videos and recorded webinars on different, the different areas of the initiative. Access to Space for All exists thanks to important partners, and you will hear about their contributions. But most importantly for me also, you will also hear right now from the team of the office behind the initiative. Uh, you will hear from Mr. Jorge de la Rio Vea, who is the scientific officer, uh, for the initiative, Ms. Asuke Mori, expert seconded from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, and Mr. Zhang Wenbin, seconded from the National Space Administration in China. So, thank you very much, and I hope this will uh, clarify what the initiative is about and hopefully attract uh, yourselves as member states and hopefully help you to understand the importance of sharing the information about the initiative within your own constituencies. So thank you very much, and please, uh, Jorge, I leave that to you now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Luke, uh, for for your introduction. Um, I would like to, to thank also the delegates that decided to join us uh, in this side event about access to space for all. And we do hope that this event is useful, and please don't hesitate to contact any of us for questions or, or comments we are actually here to support you. Uh, I would like to start with a question that you already have on your screen, and I, I would like you to think about its answer. It's, it's very hypothetical. Uh, what if a country would become spacefaring, for example, launching satellites without national space loan policy, without a technology roadmap or trained personnel, or even without an economic analysis of the benefits that it can bring? I don't want you to, to, to answer that question, but keep it in mind. In Access to Space for All, we focus on the technology side of the answer to that question. And in this presentation, you will see how uh, you can contribute or benefit from what we are doing. So step one would be get the right people and inspire others. And let me introduce you to Puya. Puya is from Bhutan. Through a fellowship that is offered under the education component of the satellite development track of Access to Space for All, she changed her career path from being an electrical engineer to a space engineer. She was involved in building Bhutan One and the first satellite of Bhutan, and she was awarded a fellowship that is called PNST Fellowship that is awarded through Access to Space for All. And after completing the uh, the studies in, in QTEC, the team who built the satellite went back to Bhutan. They are now working in a government agency and together they are developing satellite projects that contribute to the growth 
of the space sector in Bhutan. Uh, when Puja uh, had her dream to become aerospace engineer, to be uh, involved in space, she didn't have any role model that she could use or ask. In turn, this fellowship allowed her and other colleagues of her to become a point of reference for students in their own countries. Someone that students in their countries can turn to and discuss their dreams of working in the space sector, which is very important because then those students will have a role model to relate to and feel more confident about what they are doing. This fellowship that I was mentioning is offered uh, thanks to the to the general support of, of QTEC, the Kyushu Institute of uh, Technology, and uh, and uh, Japan, the government of Japan. What do you think that that QTEC is is getting out of offering an opportunity through access to space for all? Well, think about it. Who do you think Puja is more likely to develop space projects with? Thanks to the fellowship, she knows the culture, she knows the people, and she has a network of contacts. I would really bet that she would think in QTEC as a first option to develop a space project in a partnership. What do you think? So in Access to Space for All, we have an education component, which contains not only this fellowship, but other resources to get the right people and inspire others. And that's why capacity building, including education, is crucial. Think about your teachers and professors. And uh, they can be teaching about what? For 30 years, each year 50 students. That is 1,500 people influenced by one single person. Through our education component, we already have a teacher's guide. And we are working in the development of a curriculum to help those professors that would like to introduce the space in their curriculum and benefit from the opportunities that Access to Space for All offers. Please check our resources. Check the resources that we have available. And to the delegates uh, that are present in this meeting, please don't hesitate to provide us any suggestion to improve. Let's move to step two. Keep sustainability of space activities in mind, and I refer to being able to sustain a space effort within one country. And uh, I have a quote from a professor. He was the project coordinator of the team that was awarded one of the hands-on opportunities that we have under Access to Space for All, the drop test opportunity. And he says this, back in 2016, our project showed that it was possible to get successfully involved in topics related to space exploration. And it served as motivation, not only for the team members, some of them remain engaged working with the space technologies, but for other wider audiences of students and researchers. After this, projects with CubeSats, drone, other microgravity experiments, and even the creation of a national space agency have become a reality. This uh, professor is from, from uh, Costa Rica and actually, the person that you see in the screen is Moasir Fonseca. He's also a student and he was part of that team that uh, of that professor that I was mentioning before. He was testing what is the difference in behavior of robotic arms in microgravity versus the behavior that those robotic arms would have on Earth gravity. And that was in 2016. In 2020, he was part of the team that was awarded KiboCube, another opportunity that uh, is offered under Access to Space for All in partnership with YAXA, for the creation of Morasan-1, a satellite that is coordinated by the Central American Integration System. Today, Moasir is now one of the coordinators of the Central American Aerospatial Network that is helping students, and not only students, also professionals, to network in aerospace in Central America. And I would like to stress the importance of a path here. There was one opportunity under Access to Space for All, then another, and those who had, and those two opportunities have been the spark of something much bigger. This is why Access to Space for All have opportunities organizing tracks. So guidance to follow which opportunity and which path uh, 
can be followed to actually achieve a result is there. Access to space for all provides tracks to incrementally develop capabilities. And there are currently three tracks, the hypergravity and microgravity uh, track that aims at being able to have a final capacity of running experiments in orbit, the satellite development track that is aimed at being able to build, to design and operate and decommission satellites, and the space exploration track, which aims at broadening the space exploration activities. So just think in sustainability, it's not just one opportunity and then that's it. In Access to Space for All, we are providing this path that is creating that spark that can lead to something much bigger, like the Central American Aerospatial Network. Step three, using Access to Space for All, you have to build engineering process, policies, mechanisms, and infrastructure. And uh, let me introduce you someone the person that you have on the left is Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo is, again, one of those professors that is inspiring others, as I was mentioning before. And he was working to get more students engaged and more proposals in access to space for all to transform generations of students in, in the university that he, where he's teaching, the University of Del Valle de Guatemala. And Victor Hugo was the coordinator of a Satellite project, satellite development project that was called Quetzal One. Actually, I have the, the, the mission patch in here. Uh, and actually, the team that won, that was awarded that opportunity, wrote the book. That is the book that I have uh, in, in my hands. And um, I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs of, of that book. So, so it's not me talking, it's the words of the team. Um, from Quetzal One that actually won, uh, was awarded that opportunity. So they were informed that there was a program that they were not aware of that would be an opportunity for their project or for our project. Um, the name of the program, one that was so much important in the future and became so much important in the future was KiboCube. This program is part of the initiative of Access to Space for All of the United Nations to support United Nations member states, especially those that are developing countries. The Office of Outer Space Affairs works together in partnership with JAXA to actually provide that opportunity. And uh, moving to another page, our proposal to KiboCube would not only be very important for the project, but it would represent a life-saving best for a dream that was drowning because of lack of resources. So <clears throat> this is what an opportunity under access to space for was meaning to them. Uh, and another paragraph of the book, because when you have an, an hands-on opportunity, the impact is not just creating a satellite and launching. There is a lot of work that happens in the country that is transforming the country to become more adapt to be able to realize future space projects. And again, this is another paragraph from that book. Um, the team was in conversations with SIT, which is the national authority in charge of frequency coordination in Guatemala. And the team was informed that through an annex, there would be a frequency range allocated for the operation of satellites in low Earth orbit. That would solve the problem of legal, legal vacuum that existed to be able to request for a frequency for the satellite. That frequency table and that annex was approved in June 2017. And from that moment onwards, the problem was solved not only for us, but for any institution in Guatemala that in the future would like to use those frequencies for research in space. And, and this is coming from, from this book. These are the words uh, from the team. 
So you can see that it's not just about technical opportunities. The fact that there are hands on opportunities open a path. For the country that is building what I was mentioning before, engineering processes, policies, mechanisms and infrastructure for others to come for others to come, like the frequency allocation table that I was mentioning before. Let me introduce you another team, the team from Mauritius. They, they actually launched their satellite last year. Uh, and the person that you have in the center, you will you will meet later on. Also Mauritius have done um, a brochure about their journey into space. And also very impressively, Mauritius Space has become so important for Mauritius that actually there is a stamp that has the satellite stamp in Mauritius that has a satellite that was launched into space last year. And I'm going to quote, I, 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 I'm talking a lot, but I'm quoting a lot of people that has been through access to space for all opportunities. And I'm going, I'm going to quote Bikram, Bikram here. This initiative prompts a number of promising avenues for research development and innovation in space and satellite technology in Mauritius. Fields which were in recent past and accessible for our small nation. We look forward to seeing a space and satellite technology bring a new thrust to STEM in Mauritius. And, and you will get to know Bikram in, in a few minutes. So you have seen what, what the Mala did uh, what has been done uh, by Mauritius, and this is yeah, the, this just the tip. Uh, one of the very important features of access to space for all is the hands-on component, because that has a very strong impact in other areas that are beyond technology. The hands-on component uh, of each track helps not only to develop human capacity, but also legal frameworks, procedures, infrastructure that gets the country ready to develop more and signal other countries and external investors the country availability to undertake more space activities. Step four, investing in space can yield unexpected benefits because capacity is transversal. Another thing, there in the screen you have Fabio, John, Gabriel, Miguel, Guillermo and Khalil from Bolivia. They were awarded drop tests to test the behavior of nitinol, nitinol under microgravity conditions. Microgravity allows to understand the behavior of materials better because you are reducing one of the forces that here on Earth we cannot get rid of, which is gravity. But if you are testing in microgravity conditions, you are eliminating one force of the equation so you can focus better in the behavior of the material. Nitinol is a smart material that is also biocompatible, so it can be used in devices like peacemakers. And that was the research that was being carried out uh, by Fabio and the team uh, through one of the opportunities that we have uh, under access to space for all. And you will get to know Fabio later on. One very impressive team uh, thing about this team is that they have saved plenty of lives in Bolivia thanks to their engineering skills. They were involved. They were involved in the creation of a low-cost ventilator in Bolivia that was used to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. And you see that ventilator there in the screen. It's in the on the lower part on the right. The skills that you apply to create a space experiment can be used in other areas of engineering and safe life. Uh, when talent and skills are there, they can be applied to solve multiple problems and not only space problems. And this is how this team was actually utilizing their skills to solve a pressing problem that was in the country. The initiative, the Access to Space for All initiative helps advancing science and thanks to the initiative, dozens of papers have been published in peer-reviewed journals and international congresses. And all those are listed in our webpage, and you will get to know a little bit more our webpage a little bit later on. 
there you can, in our page, you can follow the achievements of each team. We are making applicants to think in how they will be disseminating knowledge from the start and you see marvelous uh, materials that I was bringing here to amplify their work, which is very important because with publications and contributions to international congresses, it comes recognition. And with recognition also comes partnership opportunities, which can gen then generate additional value. Let's get back to the initial question that I have. What if a country becomes spacefaring? For example, launching satellites without national space law policy, without technology roadmap, or trained personnel, or we, even without an economic analysis of the benefits that it can bring. Now you probably can see better the importance of those elements and the role that the Access to Space for All initiative has played in creating a pool of trained persons, in planning and generating a technological roadmap, in putting in place elements and mechanisms related to policy and law, and also having an economic impact. I have given you a, a glimpse of what Access to Space for All is. It is an initiative that offers to access space research facilities and infrastructure and information with the aim of developing technological know-how, also engineering processes, human capacity and infrastructure in three key areas that I was mentioning before, hypergravity and microgravity, satellite development and space exploration, and promote international cooperation in the peaceful uses of outer space. All that work that you have seen would have been impossible without, par without our partners. And you can see those, the, 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 the logos in the screen. Uh, those partners are providing opportunities free of charge to the applicants. And they, these partners are not receiving funding from the office either. It's all in kind. Think of all the value that has been generated thanks to the generosity catalyzed through UNUSA. Also, the initiative is moving forward thanks to two extra pair of hands, uh, two colleagues that are, have been seconded by their space agencies, one seconded by JAXA, Hazuki, and another seconded, uh, colleague seconded by CNSA, Wedmin. Without them, and thanks to the generosity of their support and support of their agencies, we could have not achieved so much. They will introduce some other elements that we are working on uh, to ensure that the initiative is useful for partners and also for applicants. So uh, I leave you in the in the capable hands of Webin and Hazuki. Uh, Webin, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Jorge. Please give me one minute to share my screen. Um, Yes, I hope you can see my screen in full screen model. It's yeah, full screen. Yeah. OK, great. Thank you, Hatsuki. Um, so dear Gargis, um, I'm very happy to have this opportunity to um, dive you into the Access to Space for All web page and uh, our brochure with you. So we have been working hard to provide a better user experience to all, and we have been thinking about a more visual and more user-friendly web page structure. To that end, today we published the new web page, uh, index web page. I hope to show you the some advantages of our new um, index web page through a short video. So um, now we have a new center on the top. Um, the recent published um, articles and newly opened opportunities and upcoming webinars, they are going to be listed there. And everything under each track, there will be a link uh, for our readers to access directly. Also, besides the three tracks, um, we have contents for uh, member states, for partners, and to explain how we are contributing to SDGs and our awardees and our new brochure. So through the index page, you can easily understand what the access to space for is and what we are offering under this um, initiative. 
Um, so if this is the first time you access to our web page, I would recommend you just to read and scroll and read so you get a full picture of the initiative. And if you are uh, familiar with it, so you can also um, through the buttons on the top to get access to content. For example, you want to see what we have under hypergravity and microgravity track or under a space exploration track, or you want to see our awardees and to maybe to download our brochure, their link to save your time. So uh, I would like to guide you to two special parts of our web page. The first one is the awardees. Um, so to raise awareness of the initiative, we created an awardee page for each awardee. So let me use this job test awardee uh, Politecnico uh, di Milano as an example. There are basic information, news, publications, and photos there. So you can see through this, op uh, this project, this team published many scientific articles and many activities were taken place. So through their activity and publications, we are happy to see that the Access to Space for All initiative provided them uh, a nice platform for their uh, professional career. So the second part um, I would like to show you is our partnership uh, pages. So there, was, there are two links can be found at this part. Um, the partnership page describes why should an institution partnering with UNWUSA and by becoming a partner of Access to Space for All, your infrastructure, your facility or service will be a part of a high impact and high visibility initiative. So if you are interested in partnering with us, it also describes here how to do. So there is a comprehensive guidance for entities, and please feel free to contact us by uh, UN WUSA access to space at UN.org. So the second link, sorry. So the second link goes to a dedicated page um, where we hope to thank our partners and supporters. So the initiative is only possible thanks to partnerships with various public and private actors who are contributing to the initiative in various manners. Also, our supporters helped a lot in our activities like webinars and workshops. So please check our web page to see um, who are partnering and uh, who are supporting us. So next, I would like to take a few minutes to introduce the, um, the new Access to Space or brochure to you. Um, this brochure is undertaking a final proofread, so uh, hopefully we will be um, available today or tomorrow. So this brochure introduces in detail the initiative, the opportunities under each track, education, content, and um, yeah, we are offering. So also there are a few uh, success stories can be learned. Um, so I would like to guide you a few example pages. So. Um, one success uh, story from Kenya. So five years ago, Kenya didn't have their own satellite in orbit, and now Kenya is very active in space area. So later this month, Kenya will hold uh, the Kenya Space Expo and uh, Conference 2022. There were many interactions between Kenya and the uh, and the initiative. So in 2018, the first Kenyan satellite launched through Kibokyu, and last year as um, part of an applicant consortium. They won the Bartolomeo and also they won the Isenscope opportunity. Um, so um, you can read their story in our brochure um, to see how the initiative helped a uh, developing country in capacity building. Another story is uh, from Guatemala. Also through KiboCube, they launched the first Guatemalan satellite in 2020. And what happened there is incredible. So the project changed altitude among the students uh, in the university in Guatemala. They don't see these ideas as something illusory or unrealistic anymore. So enthusiastic in scientific and uh, technical research have been enlarged. And two books and a documentary published um, so their story is keeping inspiring youth in Guatemala. Um, so let me uh, summary a few numbers we achieved in last year. 
Now there are nine um, hands-on opportunities are offered under the initiative. And in 2021, we held over 50 webinar sessions and over 1800 participants joined our live sessions and more than 70 hour uh, video content were published on YouTube channel, um, which attracted over 7,000 uh, 7, views. And uh, on Twitter, the hashtag access space for all had over 1 million views in 2021 which make it, uh, make, make it now one of the most popular topic um, of the UN WUSA social media. And as my colleague already mentioned, um, the initiative has been working hard to support the sustainable development goals. And our applicants are also uh, provide uh, informations on how their activity will support the SDGs. So you can find some examples in our brochure um, that our awardees are supporting the SDGs, like uh, Clincom uh, for climate change, uh, Questel satellite for clean water, and also the, um, as Jorge mentioned, the ventilator developed by job test team for good health. So more examples can be found on our um, web page. So there are more contents about the initiative and each opportunity and educational content so you can find in the brochure. So please go to our web page um, yeah, today or tomorrow to download the brochure and please feel free to share our link to anyone who may be interested in access to space for all. Thank you. Um, so um, next I will give the floor to uh, my colleague Hazuki. He will introduce Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me and see me. I will share my screen as well. Um, as Jorge and Wenbin have been explaining about the human stories of the initiative and um, about the different activities we have been doing, I'd like to um, put my focus on how we have been um, continuing our capacity building activities during the COVID-19 pandemic and after that. So hold on, please give me a second. And if you have any questions, because I see some raised hands, please write them in the chat and we will take time to answer them at the end. So I am hoping that you are seeing my screen now. So um, in the past two years, we have conducted more than 50 webinars just for the initiative, and we have succeeded in collecting more than 1,800 live connected par participants in 2021. We recorded all of our webinars and put them on our YouTube. And as of February, Sorry, I should have updated the numbers maybe, but as of February, we have more than 70 hours of content on the YouTube channel with more than 7,000 views. We have conducted announcement of opportunity webinars and question and answer webinars for all the programs um, that we opened during the years. And this is because we want to help applicants understand the program and really give tips on how to fill in the application form. We also value the actual interaction with the participants, and we have received feedback that these Q&A sessions were really um, useful for them. Also, we have conducted common knowledge webinars, such as the ones focusing on international guidelines and on gender equality. And we conducted two series that received good feedback from participants, but also from member states during COPE with statements. One of them is the webinar series on conducting R&D in hypergravity and microgravity, and the other one is Kibo Cube Academy. So before going into the details of the webinars, how are microgravity and hypergravity experiments relevant to you and your country? What benefits will it bring to you? Well, as you can see on the screen, testing in microgravity and hypergravity represents an achievable entry point to acquire new knowledge and conduct various tests in many different scientific research fields, such as biology, chemistry, combustion, fluid dynamics, fundamental physics, material science, you name it, everything is on the list. It is really a beneficial first step to start capacity building for space activities and also for non-space related activities as well, in the sense of you can cover so many different scientific fields. So that is why the main objectives of the webinar series was to raise awareness of the many different types of R&D done in hypergravity and microgravity environments and to trigger their interest in conducting experiments there. And to realize that aim, we constructed the webinar so that it would provide useful information for anyone so that they can start their first step in this field. 
So we covered the fundamentals, special characteristics, and advantages of hypergravity and microgravity as an environment, an overview of what type of research can be done and its applications, and how to actually develop an experiment to be conducted in this um, environment. So we had 565 live participants through the nine webinar series, and we have many views on YouTube and the recordings and presentations, and we had many impressions on social media as well. And thanks to the cooperation of the Microgravity Research Associations, as you can see there on the left hand side, such as ASGSR from the United States, ELGRA from Europe and JASMA from Japan, we had 45 speakers from 40 organizations and 13 nations. So we had a very broad range of people sharing their knowledge. Um, we really believe that the knowledge shared in these webinars have educational benefits, and we hope that everyone will have a look. The presentation documents and recordings are all accessible online on our Access to Space for All website, so please take a look. So the second successful series was Kibo Cube Academy. Again, before going into the details of the webinars, how are small satellites relevant to you and your country? What benefits will it bring to you? Well, CubeSats offer a large variety of applications, and developing a CubeSat can be the first step of a country in the acquisition of the skills and know-how needed to develop a space program. And of course, CubeSats are affordable, they're becoming affordable and affordable each day, to develop and represent an achievable entry point to space activities. So in partnership with JAXA and UNICEF, which is the University Space Engineering Consortium, um, we conducted KiboCube Academy. And it is a series of educational webinars, not only for future KiboCube applicants, but also for students, engineers, scientists that are interested in gaining knowledge of technical aspects of satellite development. It covers the entire life cycle of satellite development from how to design, how to develop, test, operate, and utilize their CubeSat. Season one was conducted um, in January and February 2021 with four live webinars. And owing to its success, we were able to expand our activities in, uh, in October and November of last year with three live webinars, 21 pre-recorded webinars, which we have more coming up in July, and technical consultation sessions for the teams that applied. So it's the same as the hypergravity and microgravity webinar series, but we really believe that the knowledge and the information that is shared in these webinars have educational benefits and it could really help you um, really understand the fundamentals of satellite development and of course about space as well. So please take a look at our website and it's you can find the presentations, the documents, the recordings all there. So besides webinars, another new uh, way of us reaching the people that are interested in the initiative and of course highlighting the people in the initiative was interview series. So the Access to Space for All team has been active in really trying to communicate the efforts and usually we have been doing that through conferences, papers, webinars and of course social media but we really wanted to give a focus to each of the players and we started conducting interviews and putting their story into an article. So this year, we are planning an interview series focused on how each of their programs and projects contributes to the sustainable development goals, as we truly want to communicate the message that space technology and its applications can support an enhanced life here on the ground. So the first interview was conducted with our partner for the Bartolomeo program, Airbus Defense and Space, and the awardee of the program, the ClinCamp team. Please have a look to learn about the program itself and how this program contributes to the SDGs, and especially in this case, how the project will tackle climate action in East Africa. So we have conducted more separate interviews as well, and you can see some of the examples. And we have two speakers from these two teams that are on the interviews here. So with this, I'd like to end my part of the presentation and invite the two speakers to have their presentations to talk more about um, their project. But of course, please make sure to look at um, these interviews as um, they cover the whole story as well. So with this, I'd like to invite um, Fabio from the Universidad Católica Boliviana, who is a drop test awardee, and he will be giving a talk about his experience. So Fabio, you have the floor. Thank you, Hasuki. I don't know if you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and see you. I have stopped presenting. Do you think you can share your screen? 
I don't know if you can see my screen. Maybe it's loading. Not yet. Hmm. Okay, then maybe I can share the screen on Fabio's behalf. I wonder if everyone can see the screen now. Yes, yes, I can see. Okay, then let's go with this. Okay, well, thank you very much for this invitation. I will talk about the drop test team experience between 2015 and nowadays 2022. I'm Fabio Diaz, I'm from the university from Bolivia. Well, talking about the background, on 2015, we do the drop test. Then 2016, we make papers and books publication, publication improving tests of medical devices. I'm going to talk about this later. On 2017, become, I become the head of mechatronics engineering department. So I had more opportunities to develop this kind of field at the university where I work. Then we create the first chapter of science student society related to aerospace technology. On 2018, international conferences, contest and publication related to our society of students. In 2020, as Kazuki and Jorge talk about, we develop, we design and develop the mechatronic ambulatory medical breathing device in order to help the COVID-19 patients here in Bolivia. And also uh, we won again the drop test 2020. On 2021, we were winners of many international awards related to aerospatial science like NASA, winners of a stratospheric globe contest. That's why we are going to, to fly even to Panama and papers publication related to attitude control in nanosatellites. Next, please, Hazuki. Well, as we talk, the first activity was drop test 2015. And this first experience was not just beneficial for the knowledge and skills obtained, it was a change of mind for the students, even for the company and university involved. It showed, it showed all of us and our special science and technology is a field where we can also do some research and even important projects or participating in contests, even in our country didn't have a space program. We have a, a warden in order to test the analyze how medical devices and biomaterials bio such as nitinol performs under microgravity conditions. And there you can see the younger me with all the team back in 2015. Next, please, Hatsuki. How about the impacts between that gap of 2015 and 2019 before the drop test? We found a new chapter and research line related to aerospatial engineering and technology. We start participating in national and even international competition, such as NASA ERG, PADF Aerospace Globes Research, or NanoSats NASA Research Competition, among others. This kind of research activities project or competitions were very challenging for us not just because we live in a country without a formal aerospatial program, but also because finding equipment or tools in order to do a specific engineering research isn't really, it's really hard and even expensive. Making this kind of task even more challenging. By other hand, the experience gained during the drop test was helpful not just because it opened the students and government mind to this field. It also developed soft skills and increased the quality standards regarding projects in comparison to other students or university around our region. That's why we won many other international contests related to this engineering field in general. 
Then what happened? The COVID-19. Thanks to the quality standards, as I said, and soft skill development with the team of drop tests, during pandemic, we decided to help our society with use of technology and our knowledge related to medical devices. That was the project MAMBU, that stands for Mechatronics Ambulatory Medical Breathing Unit. This pandemic time was horrible for the whole world, but for countries like the one we live, where the sanitary and health situation is usually bad, the pandemic put us under a, a national emergency. That's why we gather our team up and using the knowledge of our medical devices and contact of companies and even foundations, we design, development, and implement Mambu, an emergency medical device that, thanks God, it really saved life during the first and worst COVID wave in Bolivia. Drop test 2020 until 2022 because we are going to travel in two weeks because we didn't we we couldn't travel before because of the pandemic we decided to apply another time for the drop test for 2020 waiting to understand and even propone a new additive manufacturing technique named as microgravity liquid printing this new opportunity starts a new field of research in materials and manufacturing techniques, and also make us thinking to open a new chapter in the scientific student society related to materials using the knowledge acquired from the drop test 2015 with nitinol and result of this drop test 2022 with resin. What about the future? As you can see, there is the scientific society of students. We have more than 20 active projects, more than 90, 90 active students related, not just in aerospatial research among other, another engineering projects, more than five international awards and more than 11 indexed papers. The future is built the motivation of our young professors and the students that, that understand that research is a way to innovative and make real changes to their context. This kind of program like drop test is more than beneficial for students and university that participate. It helps to the whole students that understand the benefits of research and also help to the countries without an official space program to put the rise over us. Let them understand that real science and engineering can be made in this kind of countries and contribute in weight to develop of education, manufacturing and research ecosystem. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, I would like without any delay, to, to give the floor also to Bikram, uh, who was the awardee of Cube of Cube uh, that was deploying MIRSAT1 uh, last year. Bikram, uh, you have the floor. Thank Hazuki you. Will be sharing your slides. Yeah, um, Hazuki will be sharing. All right. Um, Hazuki, can can you put on the, the slides or? Yeah, sorry, I'm having a bit of an issue. Please, sorry, give me one minute. I... <sighs> Um, Let's get. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Ah, okay. Okay, great. So, um, all right. So you can hear me, you can see my screen, right? Yes. yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Vikram. Okay, no problem. So um, I'm from the Mauritius Research and Innovation Council. Uh, Mauritius is a very small country um, in the Indian Ocean, and uh, we are only two point, uh, around 2,000 square kilometers uh, um, big, but we have a huge exclusive economic zone. 
And uh, the main advantage is that we are a sort of a blind spot in the Indian Ocean. Uh, um, and we, uh, thanks to the Kibo Cube uh, program, uh, we, won, we won the third round, uh, we were the third round winner in 2018. And thanks to uh, the Kibo Cube program, we made our first space presence. This was quite a, 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 an achievement for us because um, if you, I just heard our, our colleague from Bolivia, they seem to have many universities, high tech research. For us, we do not even have a university looking into space. It's just a, a group of, of uh, scientists who have uh, studied space um, elsewhere and they have come back to the country and we gave it a go. And um, we were, I mean, I think we were very lucky to get a very good uh, collaboration and we went through the whole process and, and we did it in a responsible matter, manner, in a sustainable matter, going through all the different um, rules and regulations and for example we registered uh, to the ITU through our local authority and uh, well that uh, just uh, to give you a, an idea in 2018 we won the award the we designed built uh, it took us three years despite the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, Hazuki will remember who here will also remember we had uh, some um, some difficulty sometimes in coordinating everything with JAXA, UNUSA and, and Clyde Space who was in UK for the uh, technical side of the, the thing. But thanks to our determination, thanks to the team's determination, we finally made it uh, in, in space in uh, last year, 3rd June 2021. And the satellite uh, re-entered in space in, in July 2020, uh, 2022. Uh, in sorry, in <laughs> April 2022. Um, well, with this, I will uh, skip uh, these uh, details. I'll share the presentation. Um, so, we with the MIASAT one, we got some around some 50 pictures taken, and um, of course, uh, just to to a, a small uh, parenthesis here, uh, this uh, project was fully backed by government. There was uh, a high level committee chaired by the Minister of Technology itself. And um, so this small initiative in space paved the way to an ambitious future. So these, uh, I we can recall the different uh, steps uh, and these were the first images that we took with the MIASAT-1. You can see a small island called Rainion Island here, and unfortunately our island was under the clouds. These were the, taken by our satellite. This is the south coast of Madagascar. You can see uh, the horizon there in a part of space. And uh, again, part, this is our EZ. We also use this opportunity to uh, inspire young uh, children and making, giving them the opportunity to uh, build a mini ground station training and, and, and uh, training program. So this was in view of preparing our future space force. Now, and, and we intend to uh, extend this program to Mauritius and, and even Rodrigues. So now, uh, the, the the challenge now that the order is very big. We need to ensure sustainability. On the other hand, our government is just learning to understand what is space. Then there is the COVID pandemic, the, the uh, whole stress which is imposed on our economy. So what to do? What do we uh, spare some money and put it on space research or do we put it directly uh, to, to resolve the immediate need of our, our society. But on the other hand, if you look at, at the future, space, science, technology can be a, a formidable boost to innovation and, and uh, exploitation of the, the blue economy and eventually give it to, to uh, and, and eventually give rise to a new uh, space uh, socioeconomic sector. Uh, revolving around space. So we are looking into this space future with the new uh, conditions now imposed in, in the post-COVID-19 world. That's why we are looking uh, into a more collaborative approach uh, and, and seeing where we can 
we can inspire more people to join us in in this um, in this uh, fabulous adventure. So, I think um, uh, this first adventure in space it made us dream, and uh, many people now, especially the the younger ones, are seeing space and satellite technology as a future potential uh, field to 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 look into. So. Um, this is uh, it, uh, Jorge Hazuki, and we hope that um, in the future we can get more collaboration from from JAXA. Already talks are, are going on with with JAXA uh, and and other friend countries to try to help us and and push forward our initiative. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you to you and and to Fabio for sharing the, your your stories. And, and your success stories. Uh, I, I do hope uh, that uh, you walk away from this presentation understanding a bit better what the Access to Space for our initiative is and its enormous impact. If there is only one thing that I could ask you is please disseminate the information about the initiative so it reaches institutions that might be interested to apply or entities that might be interested in partnering with us. If you think you can do more. Please get in touch with us. Uh, thanks a lot. We unfortunately we will not be able to uh, take your questions, but don't hesitate to send them by email. The email has been shared in the chat, and also any ideas that that you may have. Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.